Earth Science, Earth Moon Sun System, Reviewer Number One. This is a reviewer in Earth Science, specifically about the relationships of the Earth with the Moon and the Sun, and the dynamics at play among them. There are 15 reviewer questions featured in this video. If you haven't done so yet, please press the pause button now and take time to read the disclaimer in the description. By proceeding to watch this reviewer video, you are warranting that you have read and understood the disclaimer. Let's begin. Question number one. The surface of the moon contains dark spots called Maria. What did early astronomers think about what Maria are? A. Mountains. B. Oceans. C. Typhoons. D. Inactive volcanoes. The correct answer is B. Oceans. The lunar Maria, singular, Mari, are large, dark, basaltic plains on Earth's moon, formed by ancient volcanic eruptions. They were dubbed Maria, Latin for seas, by early astronomers who mistook them for actual seas. Question number two. Which of the following best describes the effect of Earth's revolution around the sun? A. It causes high and low tides. B. It causes day and night. C. It causes changes in the seasons. D. It causes changes in the weather. The correct answer is C. It causes changes in the seasons. The seasons are caused as the Earth, tilted on its axis, revolve around the sun each year. Summer happens in the hemisphere tilted towards the sun, and winter happens in the hemisphere tilted away from the sun. Question number 3. Which of the following is true about the Earth's rotation? A. It takes 365 days for the Earth to make one complete rotation. B. It takes 12 hours for the Earth to make one complete rotation on its axis. C. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one complete rotation on its axis. D. It takes 48 hours for the Earth to make one complete rotation on its axis. The correct answer is C. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to make one complete rotation on its axis. Earth rotates once in about 24 hours with respect to the Sun, but once every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds with respect to other distant stars, it rotates eastward, in prograde motion. Question number 4. Which of the following statement is true about the September and March equinoxes shown below? A. Summer is starting in the Southern Hemisphere. B. Winter is starting in the Northern Hemisphere. C. They are the longest days of the year. D. There is a total of 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness everywhere on Earth. The correct answer is D. There is a total of 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness everywhere on Earth. The March equinox marks the moment the Sun crosses the celestial equator, the imaginary line on the sky above the Earth's equator, from south to north. This happens on March 19, 20, or 21, every year. On the other hand, the September equinox occurs the moment the Sun crosses the celestial equator from north to south. This happens on September 22, 23, or 24, every year. During the March and September equinoxes, the length of day exactly equals the length of night everywhere on Earth. Question number 5. Why does the Moon have more craters on its surface compared to that of Earth? A. The Moon has more volcanoes than the Earth. B. More earthquakes have happened on the Moon compared to the Earth. C. The Moon has no atmosphere to protect it from crashing meteorites. D. A larger number of meteorites has hit the Moon compared to the Earth. The correct answer is C. The Moon has no atmosphere to protect it from crashing meteorites. Statistically, an asteroid or a meteor is more likely to fall toward Earth than the Moon. This is because of the former stronger gravity and bigger surface area. However, we can see thousands of impact craters on the Moon, while we know of only about 200 on Earth. 
The primary reason for this is the fact that the Moon has no atmosphere to protect it from crashing asteroids and meteors, whereas Earth's atmosphere burns out most of extraterrestrial objects before they can reach its surface. This is not the only reason, however. Another significant contributor to this, is the fact that there are processes happening on Earth that do not occur on the Moon. These processes, such as erosion, tectonic shifts, effects of weather on Earth's terrain, growth of vegetation, and human activities, may erase, obscure, or hide impact craters over time. Question number 6. Which of the following situations show the possible effects of a winter solstice? A. At 6 p.m., the sun is still shining. B. At 6 p.m., it is already very dark. C. At 5.30 a.m., the sun is already shining. D. The sun rises at exactly 6 a.m. and sets at exactly 6 p.m. The correct answer is B. At 6 p.m., it is already very dark. The winter solstice occurs when one of the Earth's poles has the maximum tilt away from the sun, it happens twice yearly, once in each hemisphere. During the solstices, the sun sets much earlier than usual and daylight is shortest compared to the rest of the year. Question number 7. Why do we often see only one side of the moon? A. The moon rotates only once during its revolution around the Earth. B. The moon revolves around the Earth once a year only. C. The moon rotates only once every 365 days. D. The moon takes 27.3 days to complete one revolution around the Earth. The correct answer is A. The moon rotates only once during its revolution around the Earth. The moon revolves the Earth at the exact same speed as it rotates around its own axis, so that the same side of the moon is constantly facing the surface of the Earth. Question number 8. Which of the following diagram shows a spring tide occurring? The correct answer is D. Spring tides are especially strong tides. Take note that they do not have anything to do with the spring season. They occur when the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon are in a line. The gravitational forces of the Moon and the Sun both contribute to the tides. Spring tides occur during the full Moon and the new Moon. Question number 9. During one lunar cycle, what happens to the Moon? A. The Moon progresses only from the new Moon phase to the full Moon phase. B. The Moon completes its entire sequence of phases. C. The Moon revolves around the Earth twice. D. The Moon completes its east to west path across the sky exactly once. The correct answer is B. The Moon completes its entire sequence of phases. The Moon takes 27.3 days to orbit Earth, but the lunar phase cycle, from new Moon to new Moon, is 29.5 days. The Moon spends the extra 2.2 days catching up, because Earth travels about 45 million miles around the Sun during the time the Moon completes one orbit around Earth. Question number 10. Your friend wants to travel abroad to see snow for the first time. His schedule only permits him to go on a vacation during the month of June. In which of the following countries would you advise him to travel to? A. Brazil B. Singapore C. New Zealand D. United States of America The correct answer is C. New Zealand in many countries in the Southern Hemisphere, including Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, winter begins on June 1st and ends on August 31st. Brazil is also in the Southern Hemisphere. Although it has winter, it does not snow. Singapore is situated near the equator and has a typically tropical climate, with abundant rainfall, high and uniform temperatures, and high humidity all year round. Snow is highly improbable to occur in Singapore. USA is in the Northern Hemisphere. Many of its northern states experience snow during winter, which is usually from December to February. Question number 11. Which accurately describes Earth's position and orientation during summer in the Northern Hemisphere? 
A. Earth's hemispheres receive equal amounts of solar energy. B. The north end of Earth's rotational axis leans towards the sun. C. The sun emits a greater amount of light and heat energy. D. Earth is at its closest point to the sun. The correct answer is B. The north end of Earth's rotational axis leans towards the sun. The hemisphere that is tilted towards the sun is warmer, because sunlight travels more directly to the Earth's surface, so less gets scattered in the atmosphere. That means that when it is summer in the northern hemisphere, Earth's rotational axis leans towards the sun. Question number 12. Which of the following are large and dark areas formed by cooled lava on the moon? A. Craters B. Rills C. Highlands D. Maria The correct answer is D. Maria. The lunar Maria, singular, Mari, are large, dark, basaltic plains on Earth's moon, formed by ancient volcanic eruptions. They were dubbed Maria, Latin for seas, by early astronomers who mistook them for actual seas. Question number 13. What is the size of the moon compared to the Earth? A. It is one-fourth the size of Earth. B. It is half the size of Earth. C. It is the same size as Earth. D. It is twice the size of Earth. The correct answer is A. It is one-fourth the size of Earth. The diameter of the moon is 3,474 kilometers. The diameter of the Earth is 12,742 kilometers. This means that the moon is approximately 27%, or about a quarter of the size of the Earth. Question number 14. The image below shows Willes Rock, a famous landmark found in Boracay Island in the Philippines, during low tide. What do you think will happen to Willes Rock during high tide? A. Only some parts of the rock will be visible and some parts will be submerged in water. B. The rock will appear to be the same. C. The rock will become submerged completely. D. It cannot be determined. The correct answer is A. Only some parts of the rock will be visible and some parts will be submerged in water. Since the photo was taken during low tide, it is reasonable to assume that parts of the rock will go underwater once the water rises during high tide, but it is also clear from the photo that it is improbable for the water to completely submerge the rock, since there are plants and even man-made structures, such as a grotto, on top of the rock. Question number 15. Why is Earth warmer at the equator and colder at the poles? A. The energy in the beam of sunlight only hits the equator directly. B. The energy in the beam of sunlight only hits the poles directly. C. The energy in a beam of sunlight becomes less spread out the further you travel from the equator. D. The energy in a beam of sunlight becomes more spread out the further you travel from the equator. The correct answer is D. The energy in a beam of sunlight becomes more spread out the further you travel from the equator. At the equator, the sun's rays and heat are directly above. At noon the sun is directly overhead. At the north and south poles, the sun is very low on the horizon and its rays are not only spread out, they are going through a lot more layers of atmosphere as well. How did you fare in this short test? Did you get at least 80% of the correct answers? Don't worry too much if you did not do so well. Just keep on reviewing. Watch this video and take the short test again sometime in the near future until you get a perfect score every time. Check out our other available science reviewer videos and playlists. Please like if you find this reviewer video useful. Feel free to share it too. Don't forget to subscribe to Review Central channel on YouTube so you won't miss out on newly published reviewer videos and playlists.